Right, let's have a look at another type of pattern. Here we're going 2, 4, 8, 16. And I'm sure that you can immediately see that if you just go, what's the next number going to be? It's 2, 4, 8, 16. We're just doubling each time, so we get the next term is 32. But again, when we want to work out what term 10 is, what term 50 is, what term 27 is, what term n is, we need to change our focus from simply what's the next term to looking at what's the relationship between the term number and the actual term itself. And to do this, we need to explore the structure. So let's have a look here. Term number one is just a two. To get to term number two, we just took that two and we multiplied it by two. To get to term number three, we went ahead and multiplied it by two again. Term number four, we did two times two times two times another two. So what we can see is, what's the relationship? Term number one, we've just got one two. Term number two, we've got two twos multiplied together. Term number three, we've got three twos. Term number four, we've got four twos. Now, if we remember our exponential notation, this is going to make it easier to, for us to write. Right? Term number four is two to the four. Term number three is two to the three. Term number two is two to the two. Very, very easy then to tell me what is term number 10. It's going to be two to the power of 10. And term number n is going to be 2 to the power of n. I'm not actually going to work out what 2 to the power of 10 is, because that's a very, very big number, right? It's 2 times 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 10 times, right? So we'll just leave it as 2 to the 10. But we can see then what the pattern is. Any term will just be 2 to the power of the term number. OK, here's a different pattern. If you consider this pattern, 1, 4, 9, 16, actually it's not quite obvious going from one term to the next what it is, right? Because you're not adding the same thing each time. Here you're adding 3, here you're adding 5, here you're adding 7. And um, you're not multiplying it by the same thing any each time because it's not like this is multiplied by 4, but if you multiply 4 by 4, you don't get to 9. And So there's not something that is constantly being multiplied. But hopefully... If you switch focus immediately to the way we have been looking at things and try and see what's the relationship between 1 and 1, 2 and 4, 3 and 9, 4 and 16, when you look at the pattern in that way, hopefully you can see what it is. Because you should immediately see that each of these things is just this thing squared. This is 1 squared, 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 4 squared. And that makes it really easy. What will term 5 be? It'll be 5 squared, which is 25. What will term 10, 10 be? It'll be 10 squared, which is 100. So what will term n be? It'll just be n squared. Right, and I've saved a nice challenging one for you for last. If I have 0, 7, 26, 63, I want you to tell me what the next term will be, what term 10 will be, and what term n will be. Before I let you loose on that, let me give you one clue. Think, we've just looked at squares. See if you can think about cubes and maybe think about how that relates here. Pause the video. Give it a bit of thought and see if you can write the answer in your homework book. OK, did my clue help you at all? Hopefully it did. We know that, let's just do it on the side here. We know that 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. So hopefully those cube numbers are very firmly in your head because this is going to help you with patterns. Let's have a look then. If we're looking here, what's the relationship between the term number and the actual number itself? Term 1, so for the 1, it maps to a 0. 
For the 2, it maps to the 7. For 3, it maps to the 26. And for 4, it maps to the 64. I mean, 63. Can you see what it is? This number is just one less than the cube each time. So if you take 1 cubed and you subtract 1, you get subtract, not equals. If you subtract 1, you get 0. If you take 2 cubed, which is 8, and you subtract 1, you get 7. If you take 3 cubed and you subtract 1, you get 26. And if you take 4 cubed and you subtract 1, you get 63. So the relationship that we're looking for is that for any term, the way you get it is you cube and then subtract 1. So what will term 5 be? We take 5 cubed and we subtract 1. 5 cubed is 125 minus 1, 1, 2, 4. For term 10, 10 cubed subtract 1. 10 cubed is 1,000. 1,000 minus 1 is equal to 999. And term n will then just be take the number, which is any number n, cube it, and subtract 1.